hope you're well. It's Terry from Lions Den Sport here to bring you a review of last weekend's box and action where we had three world titles on the line. We had Lawrence O'Curley versus Chris Billum Smith. We had Michael Conlon challenging for the world title. And we had Lou, uh, Lara Ridley Wood too. Um, so we're going to start off with the Chris Billum Smith Lawrence O'Curley card. Um, my opinion, the best card of the weekend. You know, we had box like Michael McKinson on. Uh, we had Sam Eggington. We had up and up and coming talent like Louis Emerson, you know, performing on the card as well. And obviously, we had the main event, uh, Akoli versus Billum Smith. So I'm gonna start off with the Sam Eggington fight. It's a really intriguing fight. You know, Sam Eggington looked like he rolled back the years. Um, he stopped the previously undefeated Joe Pigford um, in quite ruthless fashion, actually. Um, you know, Sam had used his experience and made Joe look quite average uh, and quite novicey in there, you know, expl expl exploiting his sort of frailties, uh, things like his defence, his, his hands down uh, approach, you know, and he didn't really have an answer for the to defend against the backhand. So, you know, stuff to improve on for, for, a bit, for the Joe Pigford. Um, but in truth, it was quite an easy win for you know, Eggington in what was supposed to be a learning fight for Pinkford. You know, this he's the up and coming talent. He's the undefeated fighter. Um, you know, so we'll see where Joe Pigford goes from here. You know, you know, go back a couple of levels, increase his confidence, work on his defense, work on his head movement. You know, again, he was quite static when he was when he was going in with attacks and when he was just waiting to be waiting for uh, Joe uh, Sam to attack. So he needs to go away and work on these sort of basic movements and, and come back. But certainly go back go back to drawing board, take some learning fights, build your confidence back up and come back uh, just as strong. For Sam, Sam Bennington, he's only 29. You know, it's crazy because he's been around the game for ages. He's been in some high-profile fights. I remember the fight he had against Liam Smith. That was very taxing. Um, you know, so he, he, you know, it could be anything. You know, he wanted, he wanted to come back um, and fight. Yeah, let's see where he goes from here. Um, he's got the he's got the win. He can certainly go on and fight on some more bigger cards. Um, and I certainly look forward to seeing what else he's got in the tank. I think him at this stage, you know, who knows who else could he challenge at this weight? There's, there's plenty of good challenges out there for him. Um, so it'd be interesting to see where he goes where he goes from here now. Also on the card, we had a young, well, young twenty nine year old Mikey McKinson on the card. You know, he's a local lad from Portsmouth. Um, had him on the podcast previously as well. Good fighter, you know. But I, f I feel, you know, he's had, since the Virgil Ortiz lost last August, he's had three fights since then um, against people that he's more experienced against and certainly more skilled against. Um, so he needs to step up his opposition. You know, against Virgil, he showed great heart, showed great skill. Um, but since we've not really seen him in a, in a, developing fight you know in the next uh developed fight so i'd like to see him go on and challenge um some people in the, in the british ranks really go and win that british title from who's the british champion you've got eco i said eco isman um over at queensbury go and challenge him go win the british title he's a commonwealth champion as well you know go, go and win those two titles and then you can you know and you can go for the european you go for that traditional route you've gone through you know all these different avenues um, to get the shot against uh, Virgil, which is great because it worked for him. But now I like to see him go back and face uh, the British and Commonwealth champion Eko Usman. You know, on the weekend he called out Alex Rocha. You know, that's fine. That's another fight in America. Um, you know, he obviously left a good impression over there with people. Um, but I just personally I feel that he need, he needs to clear up this division. I know he's number one in England. Um, but he's not held the British, he's not held the Commonwealth. I'd like to see where he gets him from, from this sort of ranks now and see, see, where, um, see where he goes. Um, if he does get the Alex Roach, it'd be very hard to bring him to the UK. So again, he would have to go to America, I would think. Um, if that happens, fair play to him. You know, see where he goes from there. But that's a tough fight. Alex Roach, 23, uh, one loss. Um, so it'd be a tough fight and see where, see where he goes from there. But yeah, Mikey... Look forward to seeing what's next for you either, either way, mate. Louis Emerson, he's a funny guy. He brings a smile to my face when I talk about this guy, you know. 
again, we had him on the podcast last year. One of the most funniest podcasts he's done. Such a nice step down to earth lad as well. Um, and it's great to see him on the big card. You know, he's been out for a while with injuries. He's had, he's had a few comeback fights. But it's good to see him on the big card now. Um, you know, in a real learning fight against uh, Peter Nosik. Uh, stopped him in the fifth round. A good stoppage. Um, and there's big expectation on, on Louis. You know, it's managed by Billy Joe Saunders. He's got a great backing. People expect him to hit the heights of hitting the world title. And he certainly believes in himself that he can do that. You know, when I speak to him, he speaks confidently. And everything that, everything that people say to him, he takes it in his stride. Um, so there's, there's a big future for Louis, I feel. You know, he, he's as long as he's managed properly, he's getting the right fights at the right time. Um, he can go all the way. And he's got perfect company. He's got Billy Joe Saunders. He's been there. He's done it. He's boxed on the highest stage. Uh, remember, I think it was 60, 70,000 people he boxed in front of. He boxed Canelo. You know, that sort of experience is invaluable. Um, so, yeah, Louis, look forward to seeing what, what holds for the for the young gun um, in the future there. The main event. So, the main event, Lawrence O'Coley versus Chris Billum Smith. Now, I'm trying to sum this fight up. Um, it was the most strangest, most intriguing fight I've ever seen. Strangest because, you know, all the holding, pushing, grappling, you know, it really made it a messy fight. Um, and quite frustrating to see, actually, you know, watching it on telly. I can only imagine how it was for fans, you know, in, in the arena um, to watch that fight. But it was also intriguing because you don't know what was going to happen next. You know, that knockdown in the fourth round came out of nowhere and it sort of changed the uh, direction of the fight. You know, Chris Billum, you can see him growing stature. He was struggling in the first three, three and a half rounds. Um, but that knockdown sort of changed it. And Lawrence, you know, he, he had a strange sort of style going into the fight. He's very relaxed, uh, very loose, which is the way he should be in a fight. Uh, you know, can't deny that. But it seemed, you know, that, that knockdown that happened in the fourth round, he was trying to gauge his diff distance with the jab. He leaned over to his right with his front, with his backhand down. And Chris Bellum Smith caught with an absolute peach of a shot, peach of a left hook that dropped um, Lawrence and had him all over the place for the rest of the round, really. Um, and it really started the downfall of, of Lawrence. Um, so, yeah, what didn't help, certainly, um, throughout the fight was the referee, referee Marcus McDonald. Now, I've heard a lot of people uh, are saying that, you know, the, he did the right thing by taking points off. Um, when he was grappling and he was pushing down and all this sort of stuff, which is fair enough, you know. Certainly, you know, if he is doing it, if he's doing it excessively, which he was, points should be deducted. Um, but if I look at previous fights of Lawrence O'Coley, he's done it throughout his career. And no one's really picked him up. No referees picked him up on it. We certainly have as people, who, you know, pundits and you know, people who, do, who review the fights. But the referees haven't. So it's quite interesting, you know, um, that sort of approach from the referee was it? Was it too favourable to Chris Billum Smith? Was it because he was a home fighter? You know, did the cornerman have a word with him saying, "Watch out for this, watch out for that"? You know, when he's into his fight, uh, Chris Billum's played the game as well. You know, every time Lawrence would hold him or push him back, Chris would give the referee that look, like, "Come on, he's doing it again. Do something." Um, so all these things, you know, I, I felt the referee did the right thing, but I felt he was very in favour of Chris Billum Smith. Um, and, you know, that's not taking anything from Chris, from, from Chris Bennett Smith. He put an absolutely amazing performance, you know, uh, which we'll come on to in a second. But, yeah, I think the referee was influenced by the crowd quite a lot. I think the, the corners had quite a bit to do as well. The knockdowns, um, you know, the first was certainly a knockdown. The second and third, for me, you know, they were not knockdowns. They they shouldn't have been classed knockdowns. Referee, uh, I don't know. Uh, he... he, he Again, you know, I've said it once. It's very, I felt it was even very favourable to Chris, um, and the, the, yeah, those knockdowns shouldn't have been scored, um, and that would have probably evened up the fight a little bit more. Uh, but Chris, Chris, you know, even without those not he still, he still would be the deserved winner. Um, but I just felt like the referee was a little bit against him. And there was a prime example in the middle of the round where I think it was the fourth, fifth, it's fifth round where Chris Billum. And Lawrence, where Lawrence Acoli, sorry, had a Vaseline on his on his eyebrows, 
and the referee, you know, just as he's about to go to fight, going to stop, take his too much Vaseline on his eye. But then when you look at Chris Bill and Smith, he had more, you know, the same or if not more Vaseline on his line on his eye, and you know, he didn't get penalized for that. So it's it's a tough one. It's a tough one. You know, I thought Lawrence, you know, if Lawrence had one complaint, it would certainly be about the referee. But he took a fair play to him. You know, he's, he took it all in his stride. He was like, you know what? Referee can do, you know, he did his job. I didn't do mine. I didn't win the fight. You know, it, it was ultimately his fault. He took it extreme responsibility for the performance, which rightfully he should. Um, and, you know, it, it is what it is. Chris Billum Smith, um, credit to you, credit to the team. Um, they've done an absolute fabulous job with him. You know, I, I remember they were talking about, I saw an interview recently where they were saying that, you know, he was, he was coming in as, you know, as someone who, with that, that high expectations, but then he's grinded and he's developed and he's, you know, he's, he's been around the gym, uh, constantly around the gym and developed his, his skills. So it shows you what hard work, persistence, um, does you know it leads to success so very happy for chris and his team um you know put up a great performance and i look forward to seeing what's next for for the guys um will there be a rematch potentially you know potentially it was as i said it was a very very messy fight um these contracts if you had a rematch if there is a rematch you know it'd be it'd be great to see i don't know where they will hold it i think it'd be hard to hold it in bournemouth now, the football season starts again in August. Um, I don't think they'll get a rematch in August. Billings got a cut and stuff, and it'll be pretty soon after doing a 12 round fight. Uh, you know, I'm sure they'll find another venue, and, and, and we'll, see, we'll see where it goes from there. Um, the scorecards. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about the scorecards, uh, the 12 12 scorecards, uh, due to all the knockdowns and points taken away. You know, I find it hard how one referee gave it 12 12, um, gave the fight a draw, you know due to the knockdowns and the points taken away. Um, but, it, you know, there's potential for it. You know, Lawrence started off positively. Um, and some of the rounds where he got points taken off or was knocked down, he started positively as well that, that round. So potentially that round from, can go from a 10-8 to a 10-9. Or if he was winning, it could potentially be a 10-10. So you, you don't know what the referee was, was you were know, seeing from that side of things. But I personally... I you know I I scored a Chris Bill and Smith win with all those points and stuff taken up um, from that. What's next for uh, Lawrence Acoli? So he's he's had two fights with Sugar Hill. He's obviously coached by Ben Whitaker, who coaches Ben Whitaker and coaches Tyson Fury. Um, you know, two s first performance. Um, against the Australian guy, I can't remember his name now. You know that was a subdue performance. Uh, this one again was a subdue performance. Has he made the right choice in terms of a coach? You know, I think it's quite interesting with Shane, uh, Shane McGuigan. You know, a lot of people that have left him, they haven't gone on to achieve the same success that he achieved with with Shane and, and his team. You know, is that down to this the skill of of Shane? You know, it certainly shows it. Um, he's, he's sort of the results of some of the fighters. I think this match is, is pretty good. Uh, someone like Lawrence Akali reminds me of his of the leanness, um, of his power, punching power of someone like Tommy Hearns. And he's got that sort of, obviously, he's not going to know any of the footwork and uh, anything like that of Tommy Hearns. But in terms of the power uh, that he possesses, the height that he possesses at that weight as well, um, it's very much similar to someone like Tommy Hearns. Um, so, you know, and Tommy Hearns come from, the, come from, the, from that gym, right? So it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to see. I I still like to see the partnership still go on, and see where we go on from there. Certainly, certainly a partnership that needs to develop. You know, certainly especially if they got the world title rematch coming up, he needs to get it right in the rematch, Lawrence. Um, or maybe Chris has just got his number. As I said, they've done three hundred rounds of sparring in the ring. Uh, previously, you know, it does do the Shane McGuigan and. Chris Billum Smith just know him too well. Um, if so, then you know they, they'll win the rematch. But it's it's certainly interesting. Certainly interesting with both fighters. We'll see what happens. He's invoked the rematch. Uh, we'll see that. Hopefully, we'll see more of a cleaner contest. Um, I, I I presume we will, because the referee, you know, 
after what one referee did, the other referee would have to do the same, I would think. So there's a lot of uh, pressure on, on them to do the same. So we shall see, and we'll see what, what holds on from, from there. In the other fight, what we also saw on the other card, we saw on uh, The Zone, we saw Lee Wood take on Mauricio Lara. So if you remember previously, Mar Mauricio Lara knocked out uh, Lee Wood uh, in the first contest over in Nottingham. This was a rematch over in Manchester. Um, yeah, and Lee Wood did it. Lee Wood did it. Uh, let's not forget the, the weigh-in as well. Um, Lara come in 129 pounds. It was obviously a one two one two five uh, pounds matchup. So we come back over four pound overweight. Uh, the, you know, due to the British Board of Control, their rules they expect fighters to come in at a certain weight um, before uh, before you know the day of day of the fight, so they're not losing massive loads of weight in that one night. Due to lose the title, he lost the title due to not making weight. So uh, he wouldn't be champion if Lee would won. He would have. Uh, he would be champion, of course. He won the featherweight title in a very disciplined performance. You know, he made the mistake in the first fight. Uh, he was winning in, you know, I think it was up to the ninth round. He was winning and he got caught by a shot. And that sort of finished the fight. In this round, in this fight, he knew that he had to learn from his mistakes. And, you know, it's quite a tough fight uh, having lost, having been knocked out by someone and facing him again a couple of months later. You know, it, it takes a lot of mental strength and uh and discipline to be able to do that and look and he did that he did that absolutely brilliantly you know on the way he also dropped him you know wild timed uppercut flawed flawed lara um and that sort of gave him the platform to 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 uh create a dominant performance or you know it was no the scorecards at the end of the 12 rounds showing the 12 round one-sided fight um it was a uh, 118 109 and 116 111 so you know it was certainly certainly a one-sided fight uh, we'll see what's in store for both fighters next Lara his domestic title does move up to 130 pounds potentially for the Nottingham favourite Woods who, where does he go I think potentially that Josh Warrington fight in Nottingham uh, that's a cracker what a cracker not just a cracking fight but That'd be a stadium fight um, over in Nottingham. And, you know, he deserves it. Wood deserves it. He's a two-time world champion now. You know, he's 34, 35. He's around that age now. So he's probably got a couple more fights in him. He wants all the biggest fights now. Um, and certainly Warrington um, is one of the biggest fights that out there for him. So, yeah, look forward to seeing that fight in, in the next couple of months. And finally, we saw over on BT Sport, we saw another world title. Um, Michael Conlon, the Irish fighter, Irish Olympian, bronze medalist, um, suffered a defeat against Luis Alberto Lopez. Uh, the Mexican, who previously defeated uh, Josh Warrington, um, came back to the UK, this, this time to Belfast, um, to, fight the, uh, to fight the Irish favourite. Um, you know, everyone was down for this. You had Bob Arum down. You had the whole top top ranked team down, um, supporting. You would think supporting Michael Conlon. You know, he's been such a big crowd favorite over in Ireland. Um, you know, and this was his opportunity, his second opportunity to win a world title. Unfortunately, he came up just short, uh, being stopped in the fifth round by a you know, quite a devastating uppercut. It was it was a brutal uppercut that sent. Uh, Conlon right to the floor. Uh, he had to get air and o oxygen after as well, um, just to make sure he, the procedure, make sure he was fine, which is totally the right thing to do. Um, you know, just just on the fight, the first two rounds were really close. Could have gone either way. Uh, Lopez looked a much stronger fighter. Um, Conlon, hand speed and footwork, everything that you expect from Conlon. Uh, I think he thought going into the fight, I thought Conlon sort of felt like he would be the stronger man. But Lopez, you know, showed how strong and and powerful he, he really was in you know in, in those rounds. You know, in the third round, I thought uh, Conlon came back, start landing hurtful shots, um, speed and speed shots from different angles, which was really good. In the fourth, it sort of slowed down. Um, you know, it was more more of a control pace after a hectic couple of rounds. And you can imagine with all those all the crowd cheering on the fighters, you can only expect. 
that having their influence on, on both the fighters, and which it certainly did. Uh, but then in the fifth round, Matt, the uppercut, beautiful, beautiful shot. Um, the referee was counting by, that by the time, you know, Adam Booth had chucked the town in, which is rightfully so. You know, where, where's, where's, what's next for Conlon now? He's had two world title shots. Uh, he's had some brilliant nights in his hometown. And since turning pro, I remember his debut over in Madison Square Garden, sold out a packed arena. He had Conor McGregor in his corner that night as well. Press that he does, you know, the amount of tickets he sells out over there. Uh, how his popularity, I'm sure he can come back for another world title. You know, he can potentially move up super middleweight. He's quite a big featherweight. Um, he can move up. You know, Shakur Stevenson has just um, left the division. He's obviously moved up to lightweight. They get, uh, they've got some titles available in there that he can go and challenge some of the fighters in there. So there's options for Conlon. He's, he's 31. You know, he's still in the prime of his, his career. He can certainly go on and go and achieve great things still. Um, and potentially, you know, super super featherweight and potentially lightweight. Again, he's big enough. Um, so we shall see what the future is in store. I hope he stays in the sport. Um, you know, he's dedicated his whole life to the sport. Um, it, so, yeah, it'd be good to see him. Good to see him win that world title eventually. Hopefully he does. Well, guys, thank you very much, everyone, for, for, for listening, tuning in, watching. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Please leave any feedback in the comments below. If you do like it, please subscribe to the channel uh, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.